In a world of disposable tech, planned obsolescence and engines you can't fix without a computer science degree. What if the answer to ultimate reliability was designed almost half a century ago? This is the story of the OM617, the over-engineered five-cylinder diesel masterpiece that Mercedes-Benz will probably never build again. All right, it's the early 1970s, and Mercedes-Benz wants a new diesel engine that's smoother, more powerful, and more refined than anything they've done before. Enter the OM617, a straight five configuration designed to bridge the gap between smaller four-cylinder diesels and the big sixes. Right off the bat, it was clear this engine wasn't messing around. Now, why five cylinders? Well, Mercedes realized that a five-cylinder layout delivers a sweet spot in balance and power. It's inherently smoother than a four, but lighter and simpler than a six. That meant fewer vibrations, a more compact design, and the potential for better fuel economy, all big pluses during the oil crisis era. When the OM617 debuted in 1974, it packed 3.0 liters of displacement, 3,000 cubic centimeters of robust diesel power. Stock output hovered around 80 to 95 horsepower, depending on the market and model year, with torque peaking at about 118 to 140 pound-feet. Numbers might not sound sky-high by today's standards, but back then, especially in diesel form, this was impressive. Car buffs will recognize the OM617 primarily from the W123 series. Think 300D sedans and wagons, and later the W126 300SD in the US market. But the engine story doesn't stop there. You'll also find this motor in light trucks, like the Mercedes T1, AKA TN, as well as in some industrial and marine applications. Versatility was baked right into the design. Let's talk internals. Under the hood, you've got a cast iron block and cylinder head. Yep, both are iron, making this engine almost indestructible. The forged steel crankshaft and connecting rods add to its longevity. And the head gasket? Legend has it that many OM617s can cruise past half a million miles with stock internals provided you keep up with oil changes and basic maintenance. Cooling is handled by a belt-driven fan and a large radiator. The OM617 runs a non-interference valve setup, meaning if things go south, like a broken timing belt, your pistons and valves usually stay out of each other's way. That's a huge relief for anyone worried about catastrophic engine damage. Fuel delivery on early OM617s was mechanical injection controlled by the Bosch VE pump. This pump is a work of art built like a tank and easily rebuildable. It meters fuel based on engine vacuum, so there's nothing electronic to go haywire. Later variants introduced turbocharging and even an intercooler, boosting output to the mid-110 horsepower range. Speaking of turbos, Mercedes added a Garrett turbocharger to the OM617 in the late 70s for certain models. The turbocharged 300 SD in the US delivered around 125 horsepower and nearly 180 pound feet of torque. More punch for highway passing and loaded wagons without sacrificing that signature diesel economy. One of the most charming aspects of the OM617 is its fuel economy. Back in the day, a well-tuned 300D could see mid-20s miles per gallon on the highway, and sometimes even better if you kept speeds mellow. That means coast-to-coast -coast runs with fewer stops at the pump, a concept that still resonates today. You've probably heard stories of these engines running forever. We're talking 500,000 miles, 600,000 miles, sometimes over 1 million miles with nothing more than routine oil and filter changes. There's one guy in California who swears his OM617 ran daily duty for 25 years straight. And when he finally retired the car, the engine still looked and sounded healthy. Here's the juiciest bit. 
while die-hard Mercedes purists were busy praising the ironclad reliability of the OM617 in stodgy sedans and rugged G-Wagons, a clandestine group of engineers secretly bolted a turbocharged OM617A into the mid-engine C111 supercar prototype and kept it under wraps. In 1978, that mild workhorse stripped of its wastegate and armed with a giant intercooler, blasted around the Nardo Oval at a scarcely believable 203 miles per hour, smashing not one but 13 diesel speed records in a single heat. Now let's talk power. Sure, diesels from the 70s aren't drag strip queens, but the torque band is silky smooth. Peak torque arrives around 2,200 RPM, which means low-end grunt that feels surprisingly lively in urban driving. Merge onto a highway and you get a linear pull that just keeps tugging. No sudden turbo lag surprises, just predictable diesel hustle. Maintenance is another reason for the cult. The OM617's simplicity is its greatest asset. No complicated timing chains, no electronic control modules, no high pressure common rail gremlins. You've got a belt for the cam, a few filters and basic fluids. A backyard mechanic armed with a wrench and a repair manual can tackle most jobs in the driveway. Now let's highlight some classic trouble spots. Pre-79 engines had a head that's prone to cracking around the glow plug area, especially if cooling isn't perfect. Thankfully, Later revisions strengthened this region, and aftermarket head kits are available if you want bulletproof peace of mind. Another common issue is the intake manifold vacuum lines and plastic components that become brittle with age. When they crack, you get a rough idle or stalling. The fix? Replace them with silicone hoses and steel connectors, parts that modern restorers swear by. Glow plugs tend to wear out over time, making cold starts a chore. Running a periodic glow plug test and swapping in new plugs every 100,000 miles or so will keep your OM617 firing right off the bat, even on chilly mornings. And yes, glow plug control valves are out there too. Keep an eye on those. One more area, the Bosch VE pump. Though bulletproof, it can develop leaks or wear in the governor. A complete rebuild kit runs a few hundred dollars and many specialists can do the job in a weekend. Post rebuild, your engine breathes fuel more precisely, improving both economy and low end throttle response. Beyond maintenance, the OM617 has inspired a passionate aftermarket. Folks swap these engines into everything from Jeeps to pickup trucks and even home built kit cars. Why? You get the torque of a diesel, proven reliability, and that unmistakable clatter that diesel lovers adore. Plus, the tall gear ratios in Mercedes transmissions pair well with the torquey curve. For off-roaders, an OM617 swap means you can crawl over rocks with confidence. That low-end power helps winch you up steep trails without overheating or stalling. Just don't forget a heavy-duty radiator and a good set of coolant hoses. Real off-road work can push the cooling system hard. Marine applications also popped up, with the OM617 powering small fishing boats and river launches. The engine's self-contained injection and rugged construction made it ideal for saltwater duty. Just flush it with fresh water after use, keep an eye on the raw cooling system, and you're golden. And did you know? Whispers from inside AMG in the early 80s claim that a handful of engineers secretly bored out the OM617A to 3.6 liters, slapped on a pair of custom Garrett turbos, and squeezed nearly 400 horsepower out of that family car diesel. They even fitted one mule with a trick triple carburetor intake stacks and a dry sump setup for high G cornering. Word is they hope to field it against the Porsche 911 Carrera RSR in amateur endurance races, just to prove a point. But when word reached Stuttgart HQ, the board panicked, worried that a bone stock diesel could embarrass their prized petrol flagship. Orders came down to destroy every prototype, almost every one that is, 
one lone test car supposedly slipped under the radar and ended up in a private collection in Scandinavia, its guttural five-cylinder roar still echoing among diesel purists as a what-if legend. So next time someone calls the OM617 a slow poke, remind them it was nearly reborn as a 400-horsepower rocket ship until corporate caution slammed the brakes. Now let's talk community. Online forums like W123 Club and various diesel swap groups are teeming with OM617 fans. You'll find build threads, wiring diagrams, turbo upgrade guides, and even ECU retrofit kits to modernize injection timing. The knowledge base is vast and most members are eager to help newcomers. If you're thinking about buying an OM617 powered car, look for proper service records. Check for oil leaks around the injector lines and base of the cylinder head. Inspect the timing belt cover for damage. And if it's been more than 40,000 miles since the last belt change, budget for one ASAP. Listening to a healthy OM617 is a treat. That diesel exhaust note, combined with the mechanical injection's clicking rhythm, is music to many ears, especially on cold mornings that clatter signals reliability. When you crank the key, the engine wakes up and fires on the first glow plug cycle. One cool mod you might see, installing a modern water separator fuel filter combo to clean diesel better than the original setup. This reduces injector wear and keeps the hood area tidy. Some enthusiasts even retrofit a tiny fuel heater element to prevent waxing in cold climates. Turbocharged builds have gained traction too. Folks upgrade to larger Garrett turbos or even hybrid configurations, bumping power to 160 to 180 horsepower while keeping torque north of 250 pound-feet. With a mild tune and a free-flow exhaust, you get a diesel that can hang with modern gas engines in the twisties while sipping fuel. Did you know? While its heart is famously German, the OM617 engine had a secret second life long after Mercedes-Benz stopped using it in their passenger cars. The twist is that its design was so reliable and respected that it was licensed and put back into production in the 1990s by an entirely different company on another continent. The South Korean manufacturer uh, Song Yong used a licensed version of the OM617 to power their rugged SUVs. The Sangyong Muso and Corando models of the 1990s were offered with this legendary five-cylinder diesel. So while enthusiasts think of the OM617 as powering classic W123 and W126 sedans, its engineering was so sound that it found an unlikely home powering a new generation of Korean 4x4s a decade after it had supposedly been retired. It didn't just fade away, it was reborn. And let's not forget the styling factor. The classic Mercedes bonnet, the three-pointed star, and that simple grille all add to the package. There's something inherently cool about a ratty old 300D wagon with an OM617 tucked under the hood, its underbody coated in oil but still turning wheels reliably. On the flip side, emissions regulations eventually led Mercedes to phase out mechanical injection in favor of electronically controlled systems. By the late 80s, the OM617 gave way to the OM603 and then the common rail era. But for many, those later engines lack the mechanical charm and sheer simplicity of the OM617. Today, you can pick up a running 300D diesel sedan for a fraction of the price of other classic Europeans. And with a few hundred dollars in maintenance, you've got a dependable cruiser or a solid swap candidate. That's why these cars are popping up in barn find auctions, Craigslist postings, and local classifieds everywhere. Whether you want a daily driver that laughs at traffic, a project truck that will outlast everything else at the scrapyard, or a unique adventure rig, the OM617 checks all the boxes. It's not about blistering acceleration, it's about trust. You know it will start, run, and get you where you need to go. So, what have we learned? The Mercedes-Benz OM617 is more than just an engine. 
It's a symbol of durability, simplicity, and that unmistakable diesel scent that enthusiasts love. From its cast iron bones to its mechanical injection, every component was designed to last and survive it has through decades, miles, and countless open road adventures. If you've ever wondered why people still chase down OM617 powered cars today, now you know. It's about reliability, ease of maintenance, and that incredible torque that never quits. Additionally, being part of a vibrant community of fellow diesel enthusiasts is the icing on the cake. All right, that wraps up our deep dive into the OM617. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our previous video, subscribe for more GearHead deep dives, and ring that bell so you never miss an upload. Drop a comment below if you've owned an OM617 or if you're planning a project. Let's share war stories. I'll see you in the next one.